My Life as a Teenage Robot is an American animated television series that originally aired on Nickelodeon. It ran for three seasons, with a total of 40 episodes, concluding in October 2009. The series follows the life of a teenaged robot named XJ9, or Jenny Wakeman, who was created by Dr. Nora Wakeman to protect Earth from various threats. Despite her robotic nature, Jenny desires to live a normal teenage life, including attending high school and having human friends. But before we dive into the episodes, let's get some context. Dr. Nora Wakeman was a brilliant student specializing in robotics, even at the young age of 14. However, she was more interested in being a stage performer, rather a scientist, and let's just say it didn't go as planned. To make it big time, she created a puppet-sized robot and named it Acorn. With Acorn, she became a famous ventriloquist, but it was all just a hoax, as Acorn wasn't a puppet, but a talking robot with his own quirky personality. One day, Acorn got fed up and rebelled against Nora forcing her to let him perform alone. However, that didn't go as Acorn had expected it to. Seeing audience's response, he started attacking the crowd, but when he found out that Nora had replaced his weapons with props, he was forced to run away. Soon after, he ran out of batteries, and that was the last time Nora ever saw Acorn. 20 years before the show started, aliens attacked the Earth, and she formed an intercontinental organization called Skyway Patrol to fight extraterrestrials. She also created Armageddroid to defend Earth from alien attacks. However, after the aliens were defeated, Armageddroid, now restless in times of peace, started destroying Earth's weapons, unable to distinguish between friend and foe. Dr. Wakeman convinced Armageddroid that the ultimate weapon was hidden at the Earth's core. Believing this, Armageddroid dug into the planet's magma and was supposedly consumed by the heat, disappearing forever. Despite that, she continued to create new prototypes just in case aliens attacked again. She created a new design called the XJ-1, followed by seven other XJs, but she had to shut them all down and lock them in the basement due to faults in their design. Finally. After years of hard work, she created XJ-9, a robot with the mentality of a 16-year-old girl, fully capable of understanding human emotions and fighting alien threats. Now. Let's jump into the episodes. The series begins with two brothers, Brad and Tuck, playing baseball. Tuck accidentally hits the ball through his neighbor's window, who just so happens to be the retired Dr. Wakeman. Inside her house slash lab, he encounters Jenny Wakeman, gets scared, and runs away without retrieving the baseball. He tells Brad about the hideous, bloodthirsty robot, but shuts the door, and Dr. Wakeman scolds Jenny for leaving her room, emphasizing that she must avoid human encounters, especially with teenagers, because, you know, they bring trouble. Later, out of curiosity, Brad sneaks into Jenny's room and they become friends. They hang out, play games, and enjoy various activities, with Tuck reluctantly joining. Unbeknownst to them, the hacky sack they kicked into space earlier turns into a Planet Destroyer class meteor. When a meteor warning is issued, Jenny swiftly flies to destroy it, unintentionally taking Tuck along for the ride. Returning to Earth, Tuck, despite a bit of scorching, admires Jenny's abilities and declares her cool. Dr. Wakeman witnesses this and decides to give Jenny some time off. However, as the scene shifts to outer space, several hostile spaceships approach Earth, hinting at potential future challenges. And from here on out, Jenny's adventures with her newly found friends begin as she manages her duties as social life side by side. Later. Dr. Wakeman encourages Jenny to practice her powers, but Jenny struggles to remember certain moves. Brad and Tuck invite Jenny to the Tremerton Town Square Fair, but Wakeman refuses, fearing that Jenny's appearance will disturb people. Distraught, Jenny expresses her desire to fit in. To address Jenny's wish, Wakeman hastily creates an exoskin to make her look like a normal teenage girl. However, the underdeveloped exoskin causes a commotion at the fair, and fairgoers perceive Jenny as a monster. As chaos ensues, Jenny realizing her appearance, tears off the exoskin and witnesses a ferris wheel disaster. To save the day, Jenny uses her forgotten powers, stretchy arm and extendo finger to prevent the ferris wheel from crashing. She earns the respect of Tremerton's residents, and the next day, she continues supporting the ferris wheel to make amends. This episode marks a turning point as Jenny is revealed to the town, setting the stage for her ongoing responsibility to protect both Tremerton and the world. After her identity is revealed to the entire town, 
town, Dr. Wakeman drops off Jenny for her first day at Tremerton High. Before leaving, Wakeman embarrasses Jenny with her loud luck wish, making her the center of attention and laughter from the get-go. Jenny tries to fit in with the popular girls, the Crust Cousins, but faces rejection as their squad is already full. In an attempt to blend in, Jenny follows advice from an in-crowd magazine, leading to disastrous consequences. She causes chaos throughout the school due to her robotic nature. Brad advises Jenny to be herself, but she opts to open up, literally, and reveals her robotic features during lunch. Despite attracting attention, Britt and Tiff, the Crust Cousins, plot to further humiliate Jenny. They sabotage her hand laser during a chemistry class experiment, causing a massive fire. While rescuing Britt and Tiff from the fire, Jenny seemingly sacrifices herself to prevent a furnace explosion. However, she survives, and Britt and Tiff reluctantly admit their guilt. Despite blowing up the entire school, Jenny is feeling optimistic about her school days while Tremerton High undergoes renovation. One day, a nerdy student named Sheldon is bullied and coerced into making a shop project for three bullies. As they torment him, Jenny intervenes to rescue Sheldon, defeating the bullies and earning his admiration. Sheldon is smitten with Jenny, who seeks his help to fix a loose bolt in her arm. However, Sheldon's constant admiration embarrasses Jenny, and she distances herself. As Jenny attempts to navigate high school, Sheldon's infatuation becomes the talk of the school, leading to teasing and embarrassment for Jenny. When the Lonely Hearts Club gang disrupts Tremerton with candy heart bombs, Sheldon offers inventions to help Jenny inadvertently causing chaos. The gang kidnaps Sheldon and Jenny, frustrated with the misunderstanding of their relationship, unwittingly hurts Sheldon's feelings. In a surprising turn, Sheldon saves Jenny using his beloved Captain Crush figure, sacrificing it to defeat the gang. Realizing Sheldon's kindness, Jenny feels remorse for her earlier actions. She visits Sheldon at his home, apologizes, and prevents a fixed, flying Captain Crush figure. Ultimately, Sheldon ecstatically agrees to be friends, hovering with happiness beside Jenny. One day, shows off his toy bike while Brad sulks due to their father denying him the family turbo wagon. Jenny surprises the boys with jetpacks, but when she's alerted to a nearby spaceship, she leaves them with the warning. Brad and Tuck, however, venture into the UFO, accidentally taking off with Jenny in pursuit. Brad's reckless flying attracts the attention of Skyway Patrol, leading to a chaotic aerial pursuit. Jenny and intervenes, joining the UFO, but arguments ensue. The ship teleports back to its original spot, where the extraterrestrial owners, Lucille and Carl, confront them. After a comical encounter, the aliens depart, leaving Brad to face the consequences. Dr. Wakeman arrives to reprimand Jenny, but Brad, realizing his fault, defends her. In the end, Brad is seen chasing Tuck in Dr. Wakeman's car, completely disregarding the lesson of responsibility he just learned. During one of her missions, Jenny faces a goblin threat in Japan, inadvertently losing her English language disc in the process. Back home, she struggles with Japanese, leading to humorous miscommunications. The absence of her language disc creates chaos when she tries to address a building fire, leaving the citizens confused and panicked. Meanwhile, Tuck's mismanagement of a sponge creature results in a giant monster chasing him through town. As Jenny battles the sponge monster, she discovers it also speaks Japanese. Engaging in a conversation, she convinces the creature to release Tuck and helps it understand the unintentional harm it caused. With the monster's cooperation, Jenny uses its water-absorbing abilities to extinguish the fire. A touring Japanese family, including the girl who found Jenny's disc, offers to take the creature back to Japan. With her English-language disc returned, Jenny ensures there will be no more misunderstandings. She might want to check up on Brad's sponge creature experiment. One day, Nora Wakeman gifts Jenny a set of advanced eyes with various features. Excited at first, Jenny becomes dismayed when she sees their insect-like appearance in the mirror, leading her to remove them and lose her sight. Unaware of her blindness, Jenny accidentally wreaks havoc in a cinema, mistaking a monster movie for a real threat. Brad and Tuck, initially oblivious to Jenny's predicament, enjoy snacks from her eye sockets, thinking it's a 3D effect. When Jenny asks one of the brothers to beat her eyes, an argument ensues between the two. Frustrated, Jenny ventures out alone, encountering a series of store robberies by an invisible thief. Discovering that the robber is Infrared Ivan, a giant eyeball, Jenny, Brad, and Tuck chase him down. Using unintentionally harmful items for eyes, Jenny defeats Ivan and rescues her brothers. Back home, 
Nora surprises Jenny with her original eyes, modified to match the advanced set. However, her joy is short-lived when Nora equips her with a fanny pack, which looks like a big butt. Brad excitedly talks about his new job at Mesmer's Diner, a popular teen hangout. However, when Mr. Mesmer notices Jenny, he really kicks her out, declaring that robots are not allowed. Upset, Jenny seeks her exoskin from Dr. Wakeman, hoping to blend in as a normal teenage girl. Dr. Wakeman offers Jenny a fitting for the improved exoskin, which transforms her appearance. At Mesmer's, Jenny, now disguised as a human, attracts attention and discovers Brad still working there. However, chaos ensues when two alien bikers, Letta and Lenny, enter the diner and are also kicked out due to Mesmer's peculiar policy against both robots and space bikers. Later, Jenny removes the now sentient exoskin, unaware it has reattached itself while she sleeps. The next morning, the exoskin controls Jenny, urging her to conform to societal norms. At Mesmer's, the space bikers return, causing havoc. Despite Brad's pleas for Jenny to intervene, the exoskin prevents her, emphasizing the importance of being normal. When the situation escalates, Jenny decides to rid herself of the controlling exoskin by pouring a milkshake over her head. She transforms back into her robot self and defeats the space bikers. However, Mr. Mesmer blames Jenny for the chaos and Brad quits his job. The exoskin, now detached from Jenny, latches onto Mr. Mesmer, hinting at potential trouble. Brad and Tucker are busy preparing for the annual brother-sister picnic, with Brad expressing reluctance about attending. Feeling his sense of loneliness without a family, Jenny returns turns home to find a note from Dr. Wakeman instructing her to do chores in the basement. To her surprise, she discovers the locked-up XJ sisters, her long-lost siblings. Excited, Jenny introduces them to Brad and Tuck at the picnic, showcasing their unique designs and functionalities. As the XJ sisters participate in picnic games, their abilities inadvertently cause panic. Frustrated, Jenny walks out, but Brad reminds her that sibling chaos is normal. When the Hammer brothers threaten the dam, Jenny is initially late to stop them. However, the XJ sisters reveal their individual powers to seal the dam. The Hammer brothers retaliate with TNT, but the United XJ sisters, including Jenny, form a protective wall, preventing a disaster. Despite their successful cooperation, Dr. Wakeman considers the XJ sisters failed experiments. Jenny, moved by their usefulness and longing for family, convinces Dr. Wakeman to let them stay for one night, concluding the reunion on a heartwarming note. One day, Jenny faces off against Queen Vexus of the planet Cluster Prime after battling Cluster Drones. However, Vexus escapes by releasing a gas that unknowingly introduces a small robot into Jenny's system. As Jenny heads to school, bizarre incidents unfold, including a bolt appearing on her forehead resembling a robotic zit. In class, Jenny's bolts multiply, and she struggles with embarrassing changes. Brad believes it's robo-puberty, while Tuck claims it's an alien infection. The chaos continues at Mesmer's where Jenny's attempts to cover up her bolts lead to humiliation. The small robot manipulates Jenny's emotions, causing her to transform into a monstrous version. Vexus seizes the opportunity to control Jenny, turning her into a destructive force. With Tuck's warning, Dr. Wakeman intervenes, short-circuiting Jenny to remove the nanobot controlling her. After a tense confrontation, Jenny returns to normal, leaving Vexus with a warning of future encounters. Following the defeat of Queen Vexus, Commander Smitus of the Cluster seeks the powerful pip crystals that accidentally land in a fashion house owned by Jean-Philippe in Tremerton. The Crust cousins, Brit and Tiff, discover the crystals and use their newfound superpowers to dominate Jenny and plan to take over the city. Smitus, disguised as the Ukrainian supermodel Smitlana, tries to reclaim the crystals but is thwarted by the cousin's enhanced abilities. Jenny warns them about the crystal's danger, but they turn against her. However, Jenny cleverly uses a fashion magazine to trick them into relinquishing the crystals, claiming they are out of style. Dr. Wakeman arrives, and Jenny reveals that the Crust cousins prioritize fashion over power, leading to their voluntary surrender of the crystals. In the end, Brit and Tiff store the crystals in a box of out-of-style dresses, signaling their fashionable demise. Some days later, Dr. Wakeman takes Jenny to a robot convention where she thinks she will meet robots like her. However, despite Wakeman telling her otherwise, she continues to daydream about making friends. At the convention, she comes across several underwhelming robots until she meets Dr. Phineas Mogg, Dr. Wakeman's old classmate and rival. He makes fun of Jenny 
forcing her to seek a masseuse robot called V for comfort. However, this V turns out to be Queen Vexus, forcing Jenny to join the cluster. Challenged to a duel, Jenny faces Vexus's robot army programmed to exterminate humans. Despite overwhelming odds, Jenny fights them off with determination and skill. Dr. Wakeman provides support as Jenny outwits the robots, luring them into attacking each other. She emerges victorious destroying Vexus's army. Vexus escapes, leaving Jenny to receive applause from Dr. Phineas Mogg and even her mother. The convention concludes on a heartfelt note, highlighting Jenny's resilience and strength. One day, Tuck leaves the barbershop looking sharp, but is pursued by various threats aiming to ruin his appearance. Jenny intervenes, attempting to defeat a slime creature, but her unconventional methods lead to embarrassment. Later at the mall, she hopes to impress a new boy at school, but undergoes her mother's repeated calls about the muck monster. Dr. Wakeman, frustrated by Jenny's dismissal, updates her communication system overnight. The next day, Jenny is embarrassed when her mother constantly intervenes at school, disrupting her life. When a muck monster reappears, Jenny struggles to remember the compounds needed to defeat it. However, Dr. Wakeman arrives in time to save the day. Despite the victory, Jenny and her mother argue, and the episode ends with Jenny's new friend Jackson disconnecting the communicator, bringing season one to a close. On Christmas Eve, Jenny takes on the role of Santa after the original Santa suffers an accident. Celebrating Christmas with Dr. Wakeman, Brad, Tuck, and Sheldon, they decide to spend the next day at the mall. There, Jenny encounters Todd Sweeney, a wealthy yet gloomy child. Believing she missed his house during gift delivery, Jenny tries to fulfill his Christmas wish. However, Todd reveals darker desires for weapons rather than toys or love. Manipulating Jenny into becoming his robot servant, Todd turns his mansion into an evil laboratory. Jenny escapes, only to return home and face the unexpected hostility of the people she once knew. Attacked, and damaged by Skyway Patrol, Jenny flees, feeling betrayed. In the aftermath of Todd's control and manipulation, Jenny is wrongly perceived as the destroyer of holidays. Sheldon, unfazed by her, reveals her year-long absence and destructive actions. Realizing Todd's malevolent influence, Jenny aims to clear her name. Returning to Todd's mansion, she confronts him about his bitter motives and learns of his plan to ruin Christmas. Controlled once more, she's forced to travel to the North Pole to destroy Santa. Wakeman, Brad, and Tuck, unaware of Jenny's intentions, plan to stop her. In a climactic showdown, Jenny breaks free from Todd's control and exposes his schemes to Santa and her friends. With Todd reformed through the spirit of giving, Christmas is saved, and he discovers the true meaning of the holiday, family. Jenny, expressing gratitude to Sheldon for trusting her, gives him a mistletoe kiss, leaving him pleasantly shocked. After wreaking havoc at school while battling the clusters, Jenny finds herself summoned to the vice principal's office. Anxious about her mother being called in, she returns home only to discover that Nora is proud of her for disrupting the science labs since the principal has invited her to deliver a seminar on robotics, which means she'll be talking about her. Knowing that this could kill her chances of becoming the IT robo girl she has always dreamed of becoming, Jenny tries to rally her enemies for an attack, but unfortunately, they've all chosen to take a day off from villainy and mischief. In the end, the seminar goes ahead as planned as Nora embarrasses Jenny, recounting every embarrassing detail about her to the entire school. However, Jenny finds solace when her peers share similar stories of parental embarrassment. Just when Jenny comes to terms with the whole situation, Nora tells her to prepare her backside for some visual aid for the next session. Yearning for a robot companion, Jenny finds love in Kenny, a boy robot, making Sheldon jealous. They embark on a date, and Jenny excitedly shares the news with her mom, Dr. Wakeman. To their surprise, Wakeman discovers her rival Phineas Mogg copied her idea and confronts him through a visiphone. Both Dr. Wakeman and Mogg forbid their robots from dating. Undeterred, Jenny and Kenny sneak out for a night at Mesmer's, where the broken oven is saved by Kenny's impressive pizza-making skills, earning him popularity. However, Sheldon notices something peculiar about Kenny and learns he's part dog. Jenny grapples with the idea of Kenny being a part dog, but dreams of a future where he's her pet dog. Despite initial intentions to break up, Jenny decides to maintain the relationship, hoping Kenny's popularity will boost her own. Sheldon attempts to sabotage their night, and when Kenny's dog-like behavior causes chaos at Mesmer's, both Mrs. Wakeman and Mog forbid their respective robots from seeing each other. Sheldon might still have a chance. One day, Commander Smytus captures Jenny and takes her to Cluster Prime. 
There, he uses mind control to merge her with Cluster drones, creating a huge destructive robot. Controlled by Cluster, Jenny returns to Earth with the terrible mission of attacking her own friends and family. The other XJ sisters wake up and join forces to save Jenny. Together, they combine into a powerful weapon to fight her, but it's not enough. Jenny absorbs some of her sisters, becoming even stronger. Luckily, Dr. Norris steps in and breaks Jenny free from mind control, stopping Smytus' evil plan. Smytus escapes, swearing revenge, and Dr. Nora puts all the sisters back in the basement. In an attempt to win Jenny's affection, Sheldon steals Jenny's blueprints from Dr. Wakeman. Vexus, the enemy leader, discovers this and decides to use Sheldon's attraction to Jenny to her advantage. Vexus disguises herself as QT2, a robot, and tricks Sheldon into helping her. She flirts with him and creates a fake connection, all while secretly planning to steal Jenny's master plan. Vexus successfully manipulates Sheldon into leaving the room, allowing her to take the blueprints. Later, Vexus confronts Jenny using the stolen information, effortlessly dodging Jenny's attacks. Sheldon realizes the truth and confesses to Jenny. Despite the setback, Jenny believes her abilities go beyond gadgets and uses unconventional methods to defeat Vexus. With Sheldon's help, she reveals a surprising weapon modification, a pencil sharpener that scares Vexus away. Although Sheldon faces Jenny's wrath for putting her in danger, they ultimately triumph over Vexus's cunning plan. Lord Brad decides to embark on a treasure hunt adventure after Tuck finds a map in a junkyard. Following the map from a cereal box, Brad ends up falling into a hole and discovers a secret underground lab. There he encounters Dr. Locus, a geobiologist who seems interested in Jenny's capabilities. Brad is trapped and Jenny discreetly helps him navigate escape traps. Dr. Locus captures Jenny, collaring her and rendering her immobile. Melody, Dr. Locus's daughter, learns about Jenny's capture and informs Brad. Despite feeling like a failure, Melody encourages Brad, expressing her belief in him. Brad manages to save Jenny, and they navigate the escape traps effortlessly. Returning to the surface, Tuck mocks Brad for not finding the treasure, but Jenny vouches for him, calling him her hero. It is revealed that Melody's robotic hand had guided Brad and Jenny through the obstacles. Tuck frees Jenny from her collar, and Jenny expresses affection for Brad, much to Tuck's disgust. The adventure, though unconventional, ends with Brad being hailed as the hero. Mrs. Wakeman's unusual behavior raises Jenny's suspicion, prompting her to spy on her mother. She discovers Mrs. Wakeman on a date with Marty Rossian, a seemingly creepy man with an unsettling laugh. Despite Jenny's concern, her mom asks her not to interfere in her relationships. Jenny dreams of Marty becoming a permanent part of their lives, fueling her distrust. She shares her concerns with Brad, Tuck, and Sheldon, and they decide to investigate Marty's intentions. Observing Marty engaging in sketchy activities, Jenny jumps to the conclusion that he wants to control her mom's brain. During the next date, Jenny interrupts, believing Marty has a mind control device. It turns out to be a harmless Wizzly World hat, and Marty intends to give all access passes to Mrs. Wakeman and Jenny. Jenny's overreaction leads Marty to leave, thinking the Wakeman family is too creepy. Realizing her mistake, Jenny apologizes to her mom, and they both learn to trust each other. After the teen team disbands due to internal conflicts, Misty returns to Earth and decides to spend time with Jenny. Misty's presence at school attracts teasing from Britt and Tiff. To retaliate, Misty proposes a prank war against the Crust Cousins. However, Misty's enjoyment of pranks quickly transforms into a power trip, and she becomes obsessed with taking it to the next level. Jenny realizes Misty has gone too far and attempts to persuade her to stop before things escalate. Misty's thirst for power intensifies, leading to increasingly sadistic pranks. The situation spirals out of control, and Misty's actions result in her expulsion from school due to the severity of the pranks. One day, Jenny takes Tuck to a cockroach wrestling match in Texas, leaving Brad behind. Feeling lonely, Brad is pleasantly surprised when Melody, Dr. Locus's daughter, shows up at his door. Despite initial fears, Brad realizes he has a crush on her, and they decide to spend the day together. The next day, when Jenny returns and sees Brad with Melody, she becomes jealous and suspicious, believing Melody is evil. Mysterious destruction occurs around them, leading Jenny to suspect and confront Melody. Despite Brad defending her, a fierce battle ensues, and Melody's explosive reaction exposes her vulnerability. 
She flees, heartbroken, and Jenny later discovers Melody's true desire for a normal life and her love for Brad. Realizing Melody's innocence, Jenny apologizes to Brad and they reconcile. They uncover that the mysterious destruction was caused by Carol, the jealous cockroach. Brad, while accepting Jenny's apology, still pines for Melody. In a bittersweet moment, Melody, high in the sky, sends a glowing, heart-shaped Sparky to convey her love for Brad before flying away. One day, Jenny decides to join a drama club, only to be assigned the riveting role of a clothing rack by Mr. Leopold. Boredom takes hold until the extraterrestrial drama unfolds. Literal aliens burst onto the scene crying invasion. As Jenny beats the living daylights out of these puny creatures, she learns that the aliens have actually come to warn her about an impending invasion by their sister planet, the Pussy Kittens. But it's too late as the Pussy Kittens arrive and wreak havoc upon the students. Initially distracted by their beauty, Jenny receives advice from the ugly aliens, I mean aliens with more personality than aesthetic appeal, to don sunglasses during the battle. Implementing this genius strategy, she effortlessly dispatches the Pussy Kittens and learns the valuable lesson of not judging a book by its cover. In the end, Jenny shines as Juliet with an alien co-star as her Romeo, proving that even robots can take part in Shakespearean tragedy. On an ordinary business day, Jenny uncovers the existence of her aunt, Wisteria, and decides to extend an olive branch, but upon her arrival, Jenny quickly realizes why her mother kept Wisteria a secret. It turns out the two sisters never got along because of their contrasting approaches on life. It's also revealed that Wisteria has a leaf and mud son, Glenn. In a joint effort, Jenny and Glenn concoct a plan to bridge the gap between the two estranged sisters. The common ground appears to be astronomy, but their hopeful scheme takes an unexpected turn as Nora appears to be steadfast on watching a lunar eclipse while Wisteria is set on witnessing the enchanting northern lights. As Plan A crumbles, Jenny and Glenn decide to put on an act where the two embody the quirks of their respective mothers, causing the sisters to reflect on their mistakes and accept each other's differences. On another eventful day, everyday food becomes animated and wreaks havoc in the town due to a technological enhancement by the Mecha Cuisine. Skyway Patrol attempts to handle the situation but fails. Jenny intervenes, saving the day by containing the rampaging food. The president of Mecha Cuisine, Seymour Hines, takes responsibility, explaining it was an unauthorized shipment. Meanwhile, a Skyway Patrol lieutenant harbors resentment towards Jenny for upstaging him. He attempts to arrest her for trivial offenses but faces constant failure. When Nora, Jenny's mom, is arrested, the lieutenant plans to permanently shut down Jenny if she resumes her heroics. Frustrated, Jenny attempts a rescue but Nora refuses, acknowledging the law. Seymour Hines seeks Jenny's help again as his creations revolt. Despite the threat of being shut down, Jenny takes action. At the Skyway Patrol base, the lieutenant convinces General Hardscape to authorize Jenny's shutdown. However, the food monsters attack and Jenny saves both the lieutenant and the general, turning the monsters into a kebab. The general commends Jenny, granting Nora a pardon. Seymour Hines faces consequences for his actions, and the lieutenant is stripped of his badge and uniform. With Misty taking on superhero duties in Tremerton, Jenny decides to relax and let Misty handle the town's safety. However, their conflicting approaches lead to a clash. Misty reveals her villainous side, driven by greed and a lack of concern for innocent lives. She almost allows the city's destruction for money and threatens to use a school bus as a weapon. Jenny, disheartened by Misty's betrayal, confronts her, resulting in a heated battle where Misty nearly defeats Jenny out of anger. Jenny expresses her hurt, thinking they were friends, but Misty dismisses any emotional connection, stating she refrains from destroying Jenny only because she isn't paid to do so. Misty disappears from the series, leaving behind a fractured friendship with Jenny. One day, a coalition of B-class villains comprising Vladimir, Mudslinger, Lancer, and the Mad Hammer Brothers unite to form the Legion of Evil, with the sole purpose of seeking revenge on Jenny the Teenage Robot. Underestimating their threat, Jenny intentionally allows herself to be captured thinking she can handle them easily. However, her confidence proves misplaced as the Legion skillfully dismantles her into several parts, leaving her incapacitated. Exploiting Jenny's vulnerability, the Legion of Evil runs rampant, 
causing chaos and stealing valuable artifacts from a museum. Despite her initial defeat, Jenny showcases her resilience and resourcefulness. Unexpected allies come to her aid, and she manages to reassemble herself. In a fierce showdown, Jenny confronts the Legion and, utilizing her enhanced abilities, defeats each villain, thwarting their nefarious plans and saving the day. Mistaking Jenny for their comet goddess, a group of alien comet enthusiasts begin worshipping her incessantly. Initially finding it amusing, Jenny grows tired of the constant attention. When she confronts the aliens, they promise to stop after one final ceremony. However, their misguided attempt to turn Earth into a comet accidentally puts the planet in peril as they unknowingly pull the sun closer. Determined to save Earth, Jenny uses the ceremony in reverse, averting catastrophe and turning the alien spaceship into a comet orbiting the sun. Meanwhile, Sheldon, unbeknownst to everyone, inadvertently ends up with the comet-loving aliens. The next day, an elderly man claiming to be Sheldon appears, asserting that space travel aged him 75 years. Despite initial skepticism, Jenny is convinced of his authenticity. Attempting to reverse the aging using a black hole goes awry, making Sheldon even older. Jenny's mother provides a rejuvenation machine, but complications arise when space pirates from Sheldon's adventure intervene. During the skirmish, the machine regresses Sheldon into a baby. Determined to restore Sheldon, Jenny devises a plan. She allows the pirates to take him into space, where time flows differently, ultimately aging him back to his original state. Though Sheldon returns to his adult self, he remains upset about the ordeal, even after Jenny's sincere apology and comforting hug. During a board game, Jenny, Brad, and Tuck find themselves in petty arguments. However, their squabbles take a temporary backseat when Jenny receives a distress call from outer space. The group heads to what seems to be an asteroid, only to discover that their old enemies, Vexus, Smytus, and Krakus, have joined forces to drain Jenny's energy for their individual goals. While Jenny captured by the robots, Vexus, Smytus, and Krakus end up bumping heads with each other on how to utilize her energy. Seizing the opportunity, Jenny and the boys make a daring escape while their adversaries are distracted. As the asteroid teeters on the edge of destruction, internal disagreements arise among the group. In frustration, Jenny directs the boys to collaborate for a secure exit. Following her orders, they manage to hitch a ride on a spaceship just in the nick of time. Feeling rejected and lonely after a baseball coach's refusal, Sheldon is recruited by a secret government agency to monitor Jenny. Trained and equipped, Sheldon discovers Jenny meeting robots and Dr. Phineas Mogg, suspecting a conspiracy. When he confronts Jenny, she reveals that robots are disappearing and she needs his help. Sheldon faces a dilemma between duty and love for Jenny. Later, when he learns that his own agency has been kidnapping robots and is piling to kill them, he decides to side with Jenny. He runs in to inform her and even helps her with his gadgets when the agents attack. Faking Jenny's arrest, they infiltrate the compound, battling agents, and freeing kidnapped robots. In the end, Sheldon's loyalty to Jenny prevails, and together they save the robotic community. Grateful for his assistance, Jenny kisses Sheldon, marking their success against the agency's sinister plans. Remember Acorn? Well, he returns several years later in a rather rusty state, and reveals how he was rescued by a child from a seashore. The boy reactivated Acorn, but instead of thanking him, he attacked him and left to find Nora. After so many years of loneliness, Acorn craves companionship and demands that Nora creates a bride for him. When Jenny storms in, Acorn immediately falls in love with Jenny and claims her as his bride. When Jenny refuses, Acorn tries to abduct her using his puppet army and actually succeeds. A ceremony is held where an unconscious Jenny is forced to marry Acorn until Nora intervenes. Acorn and his army sing the song that got Nora humiliated as a child to throw her off, but Nora manages to shut him off. With Acorn down, his puppet army abandon him, and Nora decides to destroy the robot. However, Jenny suggests making him an actual bride, and the episode ends with Acorn and his wife walking down the hill during the sunset. One day, Brad, Sheldon, and Tuck are enjoying the ocean while Jenny joins them. However, Tuck's obsession with video games distracts Jenny, causing her to lose half of her battery and crash into the water. Stranded on a deserted island, Jenny expresses concerns about her depleting power. The group, seemingly unconcerned, ventures into the jungle, encountering a mysterious figure. Sheldon, 
claiming to have been attacked by Albert Einstein, leads the group through various encounters with historical figures on the island. Eventually, they discover a building protected by an electric fence. In their attempt to climb over it, they get shocked. Faced with growling noises, they encounter more historical lookalikes. Escaping them, they enter the building and meet Uncle Wisley, the creator of Wisley World. Wisley introduces his new theme park, Histrionics World, featuring historical animatronics. When the power goes out and emergency power activates, the animatronics turn hostile. Jenny urges Wisley to shut them down, but he remains oblivious. In a battle with the animatronics, Jenny fails to stop them, and Wisley himself gets attacked. Jenny rescues her friends, and they escape on an airplane. As the group plans for their next destination, Tuck expresses a desire to visit Wisley World. Brad dismisses the idea, and we see Uncle Wisley depressed on a raft, reflecting on his struggle to find happiness, which is disrupted when the raft sinks due to butterflies. Trying to score a girlfriend, Brad faces romantic rejections at school from three girls. Suddenly, the space bikers kidnap him to make him Tammy's husband revealing her long-standing interest in him. Meanwhile, Jenny, distracted while downloading French lessons, witnesses Brad's abduction but is electrocuted by sprinklers rendering her unconscious. Brad, now at Mesmer's, learns of Tammy's desire to marry him. Initially confused, he recalls Tammy's flirtations from past encounters, often intertwined with bullying. The space bikers plan a wedding, subjecting Brad to a wild biker party. The next day, Jenny, revived by a janitor, rockets off to save Brad. She interrupts the ceremony, assuming Brad is in danger, and fights the space bikers. However, Brad reveals he wants to marry Tammy, having accepted her proposal for an exciting life as a space biker. Jenny, though shocked, gracefully accepts Brad's decision, supporting his happiness. She bids him farewell with a kiss on the cheek and leaves. Brad and Tammy are married, but he realizes the wedding ring is more like a dog collar. At the reception, Jenny accepts Brad's choice, but when Tammy tries to eat him as a tradition, Jenny intervenes, defeating the space bikers and driving them away. Relieved, Brad claims he's available to the ladies, while Jenny is glad he'll still be around. Tuck, disappointed about missing a space biker honeymoon, humorously laments Brad's decision. Facing the daunting prospect of paying millions for city repairs due to her unintentional damage, Jenny is propelled into a desperate job hunt to avert financial ruin for her family at the hands of Skyway Patrol. However, after a week of accepting odd jobs and toiling away, Jenny realizes that she's not making nearly enough money. In a twist of fate, she collaborates with the seemingly benevolent businessman M.J. Bryce, who compensates her generously for delivering his acclaimed cereal box toys. However, the shadows of deceit loom as Bryce reveals his true colors. Pressuring Jenny into dishonest practices, he forces her to cheat on his behalf and sabotage his competitors. Unable to handle M.J.'s villainy, Jenny ends up telling everyone the truth about M.J.'s malpractices. Fortunately, Jenny's actions don't go unnoticed as a benevolent millionaire rancher steps in to settle her remaining repair damages. Despite this stroke of luck, Jenny is thrust back to the grind as a payback for the rancher's kindness. Jenny's day at school takes an unexpected turn when a girl from the 1920s appears. However, Jenny discovers it's Vexus in disguise, aiming to destroy her. The Crust Cousins offer assistance in transforming Vexus into a teenage version named Vicky to infiltrate and manipulate the school. Vicky successfully gains popularity by adopting the cousins' advice on style and attitude, becoming the queen of the school. The Crust Cousins also learn about Vicky's plan to use disruptors against her. When Jenny is threatened, the Crust Cousins, recognizing the severity, decide to help her by flushing the disruptors. Jenny breaks free, defeats Vexus, and reveals her true age, turning the student body against her. The Crust Cousins acknowledge Jenny as the school hero, yet their attempt to prank her with coleslaw hilariously backfires. During a Chimera rampage, Jenny saves Samurai Vac, a Japanese robotic vacuum, from imminent stomping. Ungrateful, Vac feels dishonored as Jenny steals his spotlight. To make amends, Jenny disguises as a mechanical bird, letting Vac defeat her. The Chimeras return with a larger companion overpowering Jenny. Consumed and spat out, she leaves Tokyo's fate to Samurai Vac. Using his vacuum prowess, 
Jack triumphs over the creatures, restoring his honor and earning the city's respect. The science fair takes a chaotic turn when Dr. Wakeman's experiment goes berserk, leading to destructive encounters with Jenny's malfunctioning sisters. XJ-1 violently attacks Dr. Wakeman and subsequent battles unfold with XJ-2, XJ-3, and XJ-4, each exhibiting unusual aggression. Jenny discovers XJ-5 reactivated and on a rampage, leading to a chase and confrontation. The mysterious phenomenon traces back to the convention center, where Nora, Dr. Wakeman, and Jenny face battles with XJ-6 and XJ-7. XJ-8, a formidable sister, arrives, posing a greater challenge for Jenny. Dr. Locus emerges, revealing his control over the rogue inventions with a remote. In a climactic showdown, Jenny is manipulated into attacking Dr. Wakeman, creating tension and desperation. Nora ingeniously sacrifices herself, jumping in front of Dr. Locus's attack to destroy the remote. It's revealed that Jenny pretended to attack under Dr. Locus's control, freeing herself. Dr. Locus meets a fitting end, devoured by Nora's trash eliminator. Returning home, Dr. Wakeman and Jenny repair the XJ sisters, bringing resolution. The story concludes with Nora, seemingly eaten by her pet tiger, inquiring if Jenny forgot to feed him. Now, even though this is the last episode of the show, the real ending, in my opinion, is the episode titled Escape from Cluster Prime. In the 300th anniversary celebration of Tremerton, Jenny inadvertently causes chaos while battling Queen Vexus in the cluster. Disheartened by the townspeople's resentment, Jenny stumbles upon Vexus's teleporter, transporting her to Cluster Prime. Surprisingly, the robotic paradise welcomes her, and Jenny befriends Vega and counterparts of her human friends. Discovering the cluster's deception about her stealing golden chips, Jenny decides to help undercover. Disguised, she performs heroic deeds, drawing attention from cluster forces loyal to Vexus. The antagonistic cluster faction puts a bounty on her head, attempting to trap her. Despite her attempts to maintain a low profile, Jenny's actions set the stage for conflict on Cluster Prime. In a shocking turn of events, Cluster forces led by Vexus, Krakus, and Smytus invade Earth, enslaving humans and prompting a desperate plea for Jenny's help. However, Jenny is stranded on Cluster Prime due to the Tricentennial Incident. Brad emerges as an unexpected revolutionary leader, successfully rallying citizens against the Cluster with pranks and tux assistance. Dr. Wakeman, with Sheldon, invents a portal device to confront Vexus. On Cluster Prime, Jenny is exposed by a decoy, discovering Vexus stole citizens' golden chips. She teams up with Vega, Vexus's daughter, and her friends to return the chips, exposing Vexus's deception. The citizens revolt, calling for Vexus's removal while Jenny fights with her allies' assistance. Vexus flees and Vega becomes queen, liberating Cluster Prime. Jenny rushes back to Earth, thwarting Smytus' destructive plan and saving the day. Tremerton welcomes her home with gratitude and affection, showcasing her irreplaceable role as their hero.